Good evening and welcome everyone to Mondays at Murdoch. Um, we have a session today um, on, which is an introduction to audio and podcast. Um, thank you very much for joining us. We have with us um, Mr. Chirag Desai. Uh, welcome Chirag. Uh, he's the CEO of Maya Media Network, the UAE's largest podcast network. Uh, since its inception in 2017, the network has produced over uh, 10,500 minutes of audio access uh, across uh, 475 episodes. Chirag has also been a long-term believer in power of audio and uh, has turned his single passion project-based show into a full-fledged podcast network. Uh, today, Amya Media boasts 17 shows, uh, including owned and branded content. Uh, before venturing into the podcasting world, Chirag helped uh, build business um, businesses manage and audit their technology uh, needs for over 12 years and was a certified information systems auditor. So uh, thank you once again, Chirag. We hope to learn a lot about audio and podcasting and how to become, uh, you know, how to enter into this um, sector. So thank you once again for joining us. And uh, yes, it's over to you. Uh, thanks so much, Vega. I appreciate it. Uh, we have some updated numbers now, so I'll be sharing that in a little while as well, which is quite exciting. Uh, so should we should we give it a go? I'm going to spin out. Um, as soon as you can confirm, you can see my screen. I'll, I'll get started. Yes. Awesome. So welcome, everybody. And thank you for joining us today. Uh, as Mega's already mentioned, my name is Trag. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about audio today, about podcasting in general. Um, I want to share um, a few tips with you, but also some some uh, information about the industry, um, the, the overall landscape and stuff, and then see if that's something that might interest you. Um, so to kick off, um, as I, uh, as uh, Mega mentioned, um, I run my media network, which is a um, a, a collection of multiple shows. Um, what what Mega was referring to in terms of original and branded content is basically we we have show productions that are our own. Um, production. So I think a, a close example is perhaps like you know, what, what you see is the Netflix originals, right? And then uh, we also work with people and brands and companies that want to delve into podcasting. And we'll be talking a little bit about that too today. Um, and then in terms of numbers, uh, Mika was talking. So uh, yeah, we, we now boast 20 shows that we have helped start out of the region. In fact, two of these shows are now out of Egypt. Uh, you know, we crossed 500 episodes in January, and uh, roughly that's about 11,000 uh, minutes of audio that has been published through the network to date. Um, we also do an annual report it's called the Podcast in Mina State of Industry. Um, the 2020 report is what I'm showing you here right now. Um, the, our idea was to kind of put together a, a list of uh, happenings in the industry that's, a, that's on a global level. Uh, during a year, uh, but then also give it a bit of a regional focus. So we're also sharing a lot of listener information that we're collecting or, or we're getting through surveys and things, uh, as well as conversations with, uh, with, uh, with people from the industry. I'll be sharing some of those findings now, but then you, know, you can go ahead and read the full report later on as well. So uh, let's get started in the world of audio. Um, and now, if um, one of the things, and as Mike mentioned, like a big believer in the power of audio, uh, and the reason is uh, I want to kind of focus on four areas, right? So uh, the thing about audio is that, um, so for me, these four words describe audio in the best way, right? It's intimate, it's versatile, it's powerful, uh, and it's nostalgic. Uh, and what I mean by that is audio tends to be a very intimate experience, and especially spoken audio, right? So when we're thinking of the world of podcasts, um, you know, it's so intimate. Most people listen to podcasts in their ears, right? They don't listen necessarily out on a speaker and so on. Um, and this creates a very interesting bond between uh, you know, a podcaster or, or like a, the creator and, and the listener and the consumer, right? Uh, and it's a very, very intimate experience. It's also extremely versatile. Um, and this kind of goes back to, you know, I, I, I tend to compare podcasts a little bit to books in a way, uh, because ultimately what podcasts can do is they might be my words, but then it's your imagination thereafter. Um, so when we're telling a story, when we're doing a narrative, especially when we're doing things like documentary style shows, uh, there is so much versatility that we can do in terms of um, uh, just the kind of shows that we can do, but also there's so much we can do in terms of helping ignite the imagination, right? So when you look at a video, you look at a picture, uh, you know, the scene is already set for you. 
uh, the thing with podcasts and audio is we can kind of play on your imagination. So two people can interpret something very differently. And it goes back to that intimate experience, right? People tend to listen to podcasts and, and audio things um, kind of in their ear. And so you can then listen intimately and then discuss overall. Uh, and this is what makes it a, an extremely powerful medium, right? So I was talking about this trust relationship that happens between a host and a listener. And we'll, we'll talk about that uh, when we get into the branding section a little bit. But what ends up happening is that um, assuming you, and you and then this is something, by the way, I'm sure all of us have experienced, right? We, we like people based on their voices uh, and how they communicate. And this is something voice is very powerful in doing. Um, there, there are studies, you know, there have been, that have happened at universities and so on that show that we detect lies, we detect uh, emotion uh, very accurately when we're listening to someone's voice. Videos sometimes can be distracting in this aspect. Um, and ultimately, there is there is an element of nostalgia as human beings as well, right? Spoken word is uh, how the first stories were told, right? If you if you look back at civilizations thousands of years ago, uh, before there was. Uh, the return word and so on, right? People pass things from generation to generation through through speaking. Uh, and so podcasts kind of tap into some of that as well. And that, that creates this very, very powerful medium uh, that allows us to create. And uh, the one other note I want to kind of open with, which is um, decentralized. So uh, podcasts, uh, uh, you know, they started many, many years ago. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, one of the things that podcasts are is they're they're not the, the medium is not owned by a central provider uh, so if you contrast that to something like let's say youtube ultimately youtube is a company that um you know that that determine everybody creates inside youtube as a platform as a single platform uh, podcasts on the other hand are extremely decentralized so as a creator you can go to any hosting platform um, and create your audio and a listener can consume in a whole plethora of different apps. And I'm sure uh, if you've uh, delved into podcasts already or you've tried to listen to them and so on, you know already that you can listen um, in default apps like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You've got music players like Spotify. And Gami has podcasts too, so does Deezer. Uh, and there's this whole plethora of independent apps that you can listen in, uh, which is a very interesting space because it also means that as, as creators in the medium, we have to be kind of aware that people might be listening in different places. Uh, but it's also extremely empowering because there's a lot of flexibility. Uh, you know, we've we've seen a lot of conversations happen about certain uh, when when individual providers kind of are trying to deal with different things and people you know don't get to see things. So you know, a lot of people complain, for example, about the Instagram algorithm and how it decides what you see and not see. Uh, the podcast kind of negate that a little bit because ultimately if you don't like how let's say an apple podcast is doing or showing you shows you can always move to a different one that might be better and so on so there's a lot of flexibility uh in the in the medium in general because there is a lot of um, power left with uh the the audience and the creators of course there are different players that, that play in the space but uh, but it kind of makes it an interesting uh, playing field uh, and podcasts are 20 years old now, actually. So as of December, technically. Um, so it was in December of 2000 uh, that two people got together and they kind of had a debate about how uh, audio and video should be streamed uh, across the internet. And remember, 20 years ago, the internet wasn't as fast as it is now. Um, and so they came up with, uh, that was the starting conversation about a, um, a, a technology standard called the RSS, which is what powers podcasts today. Um, just an interesting little tidbit. Uh, so that brings us kind of, I'm jumping a little ahead in the history now to 2014. Um, I don't know if um, maybe, maybe I, can, I can see if someone wants to kind of answer this question in, in, the, in the chat, but uh, do you know what, what created this kind of breakout moment for podcasts? And this happened sometime in 2014. Uh, I don't. Seeing something in the chat. Uh, no, no, in the in the podcast world itself. So, okay, I'll I'll give it an answer quickly. So, basically, what happened is a show called Serial was launched. Uh, this show launched in two thousand and fourteen and kind of changed the game in many ways uh, for podcasts. So, um, if you if you guys remember, by the way, like when when there was Netflix, um, you know, one of the breakout shows for Netflix was a show called House of Cards. It was an original production. Uh, by Netflix, everybody wanted to watch it, so they subscribed to Netflix, right? Serial kind of had a very similar impact uh, for podcasts, especially in the US, because everybody wanted to listen to that first season of Serial. Uh, so they not only did they break a lot of records in terms of, uh, you know, millions of downloads and all of that, 
but they also paved the way for a whole generation of um, shows, both in terms of categories, so true crime, which is basically what season one of Serial was, uh, where they reinvestigated essentially a crime that was kind of, uh, had been, you know, the guy had been convicted already uh, and was up for kind of an appeal hearing. And they kind of went through all the evidence themselves and stuff. And it was started by two radio journalists with you know, decades of experience in, in the field as well uh, in delivering a story. But what was really interesting was, you know, there's, and, and I, by the way, recommend anybody that wants to ever, just wants to listen, but also wants to create in podcasts that you should listen to season one of Serial, uh, simply because it's this, um, you know, the, the season one is eight episodes and they basically break down the entire story over eight episodes, right? So think of it like a procedural show, like a weekly show, whatever, uh, and kind of telling that story in parts, doing a very strong narrative and creating essentially a documentary uh, that powered them. So um, let's talk a little bit more about the podcasting space. Um, so today there are 1.9 million registered podcasts uh, in the Apple Podcast Directory, which is uh, one of the baselines that we use to kind of see what, what's happening in the creation space. Um, that's a lot. Uh, what's, uh, it also translates about 35 million episodes of podcasts that have been out, out there today. Uh, again, that's a lot. But what is really interesting about that number is that in, at the end of 2019, that number was only 800,000, all right? So in the calendar year to 2020, which as we all know was, was an interesting year from, in many different aspects, uh, but the total number of podcasts that were launched in 2020 equaled all the, I mean, more than uh, equals all the podcasts that had been created in the 20 years of podcasting history. Uh, and so that's quite an interesting statistic in terms of, uh, you know, just how many podcasts were created. Now, we have to see, of course, how many of these podcasts actually stay, how many of them were just trials, but it's an interesting thing to, to, to infer uh, that podcasting were a pretty preferred medium to create last year. Uh, and so with all of us, you know, in different lockdowns and a lot of places still in lockdowns, uh, you know, more, you know, the number of podcasts more than doubled during the calendar year. Uh, and as I said, yeah, so about 37% of these shows are actually considered active, however. So that's where the, really the, the dichotomy is, uh, which is, uh, and by active, what we mean is they've produced an episode in the last 90 days or so. Uh, so this is, this is something that, uh, that kind of showcases the, the opportunity that's there because there are 1.9 million podcasts existing and that number will hit 2 million, you know, probably as we're talking, as we're talking today. Uh, but only uh, less than 40% of them are actually actively producing shows uh, with good frequency. And this is one of the problems with uh, one of the issues podcasts face, which is it's very easy to start creating in the medium, but as with any content creation, you know, it's tough to keep going. Uh, and that's something to think about. So, um, uh, sorry, I wanted to kind of get into a little bit about the region as well. So what does the regional landscape tell us about podcasts, right? So as I mentioned at the start of this, uh, you know, we run a, a, a survey that we've been doing uh, to, um, uh, sorry, I saw a question about how these statistics, these statistics come from the Apple Podcast Directory. Um, so uh, we, we run a survey at, at the end of 2020, uh, as we did the year before as well, to kind of understand what are the people, what are listeners here looking at. Um, the survey is kind of spread across uh, the region, predominantly UAE, but we also get, uh, well, we also got a lot of responses from Egypt and Saudi to get an idea. Um, and what we learned in 2020 is that 60% of the people say that they listen more than once per week. Uh, this is a very nice statistic to see because it means that people who kind of come into the podcasting space then hang around. So they listen, they're regular, uh, which is a good thing for us. Once a week is still a low number, which means there's an opportunity there if you're creating in the space that you have um, potentially loyal listeners who might want to, um, uh, you know, who might, who might continue uh, listening to your show after that. Only 30% listen to locally produced shows. Um, and this is something that, uh, that, that came up uh, even in 2019. Uh, that a lot of podcast listeners that are based here tend to listen to shows that are not based here. Uh, sometimes it's home country, which is understandable. We have a very large expat community. Uh, uh, but a lot of the shows tend to be out of the U.S. and stuff where most of the shows get created as well. Uh, so it's an understandable um, dichotomy, but it's something that, again, to tap into in terms of an opportunity. Uh, there still needs to be a lot of content that can be created here in a lot of different categories and, and, and in the space. Um, and that's something that, um, you know, as a creator, it's, it's, um, 
an interesting challenge, uh, you know, to get people to get into the medium of podcasting and then listen to locally based shows because obviously we provide the regional flavor, uh, we provide regional perspective, um, but it's not we've not yet broken into um, you know the podcast listening crowd very very well. Uh, and then finally, most of the people um, like to listen to podcasts that are under thirty minutes long. Um, in fact, the majority of the people that said this also prefer uh, actually prefer less than twenty minutes long. Uh, and this again presents its own challenge and its own opportunity. First of all, this doesn't mean that long content doesn't work. Obviously, close to 40% of people are saying that they will listen to something that's longer than 30 minutes, but the larger appetite is for shorter content. Uh, and this number actually went up in 2020. Again, that's an understandable statistic because, uh, you know, with, with the number of other issues, including the fact that commuting wasn't available, uh, which was a predominant reason why people prefer they want to be able to listen to something and finish it uh, when they commute from one place to another. Uh, obviously, last year that was we were a little low on commuting as well, so so that made a difference. So this kind of just gives you a, a bit of an idea into what uh, regional listeners are kind of thinking, preferring, and kind of give you an idea of what the space looks like. So, uh, kind of my first key takeaway uh, in what we're talking today is to understand audio, and that's part part of the reason why I've been sharing uh, all of these different numbers, and I'm going to continue to I'm going to share some more in a little bit. Uh, but the idea is ultimately when you want to create in a medium, uh, you want to understand what that medium does and can do. Uh, so as I mentioned, audio is extremely versatile, uh, which means you can you can do a lot more things than just I'm going to put a mic in front of someone and interview somebody, right? It can be a documentary, it can be a narrative. We have a lot of shows uh, where it's just, you know, people sharing uh, short bits of insight as just one person. Um, so there are so many different ways to play in the medium, and it's important to understand that, one. Two, it's also important to understand how the medium operates from a consumption standpoint. So if people are listening, how are they listening? How do they, how do they listen to audio? As I mentioned earlier, most podcast listening worldwide, by the way, happens on headphones. It happens in an, as an intimate single person experience generally, and then is discussed together, whether it's on social media or whether it's in person. Uh, which means you can not only tailor experience for that, but you can also be mindful of that when you're talking. So what you would do on an Instagram and you would say, hey, guys, uh, you know, this may be it might make more sense to to draft your conversations towards one person because that's that's one person that's typically listening to you. Um, it's, a, it's a very small nuance, but it makes a difference in terms of how someone perceives your content. Right. Uh, and and to to note of that. So as an example, we think of video. Uh, video requires complete attention, right? Typically, at least, uh, which means that you need to, the person needs to have their eyes, all of themselves focused on it. So they, you need to hear what's being said. You need to look at what's being said. Audio doesn't work that way, as I mentioned earlier already, that um, audio is something that um, it's your imagination that can fly. But it also means that a lot of people can listen to audio while doing something else. Regionally, 92% of the people say they listen while they're multitasking. And by multitasking, I mean doing something else. It can be commuting, it can be working out. Uh, uh, some people even listen while they, while they do work. Uh, in fact, last year, uh, interestingly, that stat went up for household chores. A lot of people heard podcasts while they were doing chores around the house because we were confined to home. Um, and so what does that tell us? That tells us that we have to be mindful of the fact that people might be doing something else. They want to take in the information, but you have to be careful about how you, how you uh, provide that information, right? So dumping five different stats in 30 seconds, probably a lot of that will be lost, right? Because uh, if they have to make a turn, you know what, you, you get what I mean. So the idea is you want to be mindful of that when you're sharing information on the show, you want to kind of space it out a little bit. You want to kind of think of uh, blocks of two or three minutes and how much you're sharing that time and, and kind of allow that listening experience to get created. Uh, and then the other part of it also is using audio, for example, to do, to create, uh, and I mentioned this just now, like the listening experience. What does that mean? That means you can go beyond just having a conversation with two people, but also use sound in different ways. So I'm gonna play a little clip now, um, and, uh, and then we'll continue after. It was on TV, and this was also the era that saw the release of the first Star Wars trilogy. But there was one cartoon in particular that I remember quite fondly, and it also had a massive impact on our guest today, Arafat Ali Khan. I think He Man is one of the first um, cartoon shows that had a movie. 
so um, the reason I share this again is is to kind of so maybe not everybody's as old as I am, so uh, may not remember necessarily the specific show that we're talking about. Uh, but if you do, that's great, right? Because it instantly creates uh, a, a nostalgic moment. Uh, it's a show that I grew up with. Um, you know, it, it makes me feel that nostalgia of my childhood as it does. And you hear that in his voice, Arafat's voice, when he starts talking about it and he just reminisces and you can kind of hear that in his voice automatically. But even if you're someone that didn't listen, I'm sorry, didn't watch the show, uh, you know from the way it sounds, right? You know that this is something that was probably created, you know, a couple of decades ago. You can tell from the voice and the, and the sound and the little bit of static that's in there and, and the quality that it was something that's a bit nostalgic. Uh, you can tell from the way the animation and the effects that you're hearing that's something from the Star Wars era and so on, right? So again, it's, it's a 10 second piece of um, audio, but you can create a whole experience. You can start visualizing a lot of things. You can start visualizing Arafat kind of feeling that moment, watching this as a kid. So there's a lot you can do with audio beyond just saying, you know, I'm interviewing somebody. Uh, some more interesting stats that came up in our latest report, which is uh, 2020 was an interesting year for podcasts because we found that 55% of the people that we surveyed um, listened to more podcasts in 2020 than they had prior to March. Uh, again, Going back to what I was saying earlier about the fact that podcasts were an interesting medium for creation in 2020, so a lot of creators tried to play and look at create podcasts. We saw an uptick from listeners as well. Initially, there was a drop, obviously. So when commuting stopped and working out stopped, um, um, you know, most podcasts, uh, podcast networks, publishers, everybody saw this massive drop um, in in listenership simply because people weren't able to do all the things that they were doing when they were listening to podcasts. But as screen fatigue set in, as other things set in, as I mentioned, for example, when you're doing household chores, it's a bit tough to look at a, also look at a video when you're trying to do your dishes. Um, so audio fits in really well there. Um, and we started seeing that kind of trend come up post about July or August, where not only did listener numbers start picking up again, uh, but also people started listening to more podcasts because they were tired of looking at a screen or they were stuck looking at the screen anyway all day because of work um, and they wanted to branch out from it. Um, and then out of the people, again, uh, going to the same thought is 50% uh, of the people who said that they listened to more podcasts actually tended to listen towards entertainment shows. Um, and again, that's probably reflective of, um, you know, the kind of year it was. There was so much information. There was so much news uh, that a lot of people turned to podcasts as a way of entertainment without a screen. Um, and then the second highest category among that was, was self-help, which also makes sense. I mean, 2020 was a big year for a lot of people to um, pick up new skills and look at that. And a lot of people, again, use podcasts as a way to pick up that. So self-help and improvement was, uh, you know, the second biggest category that people listen to when they look to pick up more podcasts. Um, another interesting step we, we asked out this year was, um, you know, we, we learned that 65% of the people think that podcasts are equally or more credible than traditional sources of media, including radio, TV, and the newspaper. Um, again, it's an interesting thing. It goes back to, as we were talking about this trust relationship, the authenticity, the fact that it's an intimate experience, so you're kind of processing things on your own. Uh, this does create an era of um, credibility. Um, there's also a bit of fatigue, as, as I was mentioning, in terms of just having to listen to the news and a lot of these things. And and narratives. And so I think that that also played its part in creating the space for podcasts that people feel like they can connect better on a podcast. They, they trust things a little bit more on a podcast. It also brings with it, of course, a sense of responsibility as creators to make sure that, uh, you know, we are, we are handling that really well. Okay. Just going to take a quick peek to see if there are any other questions before we move on. Okay. So um, I mentioned that start, we'll talk a little bit about brands. So I kind of want to give you a little bit of an overview of what we're seeing from the brand space as well. So obviously, as I just explained, um, you know, podcasting are a very interesting medium. Uh, we talked about trust relationship, versatility, and so on. So naturally, uh, the next step is, you know, how are brands dealing with that, right? Uh, there's a couple of things here, or there are a couple of ways in which brands do this. Uh, one is, of course, you, you think of the traditional sponsorships. Uh, so, podcast, you know, uh, brands can, of course, run ads on shows. Um, and then this is what I was talking about the work that we do as well, which is we work with brands who want to use the space as a, as a, as a method of communication. Um, and what's interesting there again, from, the, from um, the, this is actually a global study that was done by the BBC, uh, that brands that leverage podcast audio uh, saw increases across the board on multiple levels. So there was a close to 90% increase in terms of brand awareness, 
It's about a 25% increase in um, in, uh, in, uh, in brand uh, loyalty uh, and about a 14 to 15% increase in, um, in purchase intent compared even to radio. Uh, and so that's an interesting thing again, because um, if you look at the difference in what I was telling you earlier, it's because of that trust relationship and most podcast ads tend to be uh, read out by the same voice that, that is on the show. Uh, this creates a, an interesting relationship where that brands have a lot of opportunity to leverage. And by the way, we see that even uh, regionally as well, right? So in the region, we've learned that 66% of the people say that they actually listen to advertising on shows. Uh, part of it is the fact that, again, as I mentioned, a lot of podcasters listen passively or, or while multitasking, uh, which means that there's no need to run and you know kind of flip it so there's a better chance there. Uh, but the other side of it also is that a lot of people use podcasts as a way to get to know about brands and companies and products and services uh, and say, so actually, they don't mind as long as the ad is not too long and as long as there are not that many ads, which is typically the complaint that somebody might have, um, they tend to listen to the advertising. Um, and this is something, by the way, that uh, if, you, if you talk to a lot of uh, podcasters and especially the ones who've been around for a little while, uh, you know, they don't want to, they also want to make sure they're very careful because they have to read out the ads. They're very careful about the brands they support. Uh, because there's a little bit of a personal um, element to it. So they, they don't want to be, you know, they don't want ads on their show that they don't support the brand, for example. Uh, and similarly, they because they want to keep the listening experience uh, you know, good, they, they tend not to do more than two. And in some cases, more established shows may go up to three ad, you know, ads uh, per episode. And then even, uh, again, locally, 92% people said they would listen to a branded show. Uh, and by branded show here, what I mean is ultimately a show that is uh, paid for maybe uh, and sponsored by a brand or created around a brand, uh, but not necessarily just a series of marketing messages. And ultimately it is down to the fact that the content needs to be good. But the idea is it's, it's a great way to establish a connection with your consumers, with your potential consumers. Uh, it's a way to showcase because of the, the traditional long form method of, of podcasts, right? They tend to be at least 30 minutes, allows you to tell a story, even if it's through an interview. Um, you can actually create a lot of value, uh, you know, for, for listeners. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people will say, yeah, I don't mind listening to Brandon Show provided the content is good and it's not just a bunch of marketing messages. Um, and as an example, uh, I want to share some work we did uh, with Volkswagen last year, which was really interesting. So Volkswagen, um, as I'm sure everybody already knows who they are and what they do, uh, basically wanted to explore uh, creating. Uh, they did a video trailer series, but then we did a long form podcast around it. Um, so of course, you can go check this out uh, in the podcast player. I'm going to play a really quick clip uh, and then we'll tell you more about it. Okay. It took me maybe a few minutes to process. And then I think I just went crazy. I think I just started screaming. We were having breakfast and I started throwing the plates on the ground. I was like, you know, you're lying to me. And that's, that's pretty much how I reacted. So uh, what was interesting about this project outside of uh, what you just heard, which is obviously quite a moving story, uh, the woman in question, Aparna, um, lost her parents when she was just about to enter university. Um, and this is kind of a little clip from the, from the period where she kind of received the news and how she was processing it as, as a teenager or a late teenager. Uh, but what's interesting is that, uh, you know, during the entire um, episode, if you listen to it, uh, you know, we don't talk about Volkswagen at all. We don't mention their cars. I mean, we talk about Volkswagen um, attached to the name of the show as being a show brought to you by Volkswagen, but we don't talk about the cars at all. And I think that that makes sense because Volkswagen, I mean, I think most people know that Volkswagen makes cars, so Volkswagen doesn't really need to uh, leverage that. Uh, you know, showcasing a car is, a, is an imagery thing, so obviously it's a nice idea to have, um, uh, whether you look at things like Instagram or look at YouTube as a way to showcase that. And what Volkswagen wanted to do was they wanted to actually highlight stories of uh, the people that use their cars, their drivers, the entrepreneurs, uh, interesting people that live in the region that they support. Um, and so that's what they wanted to do. And that's why they called it the journey. Um, they wanted to kind of showcase the journey of a couple of people that they thought were uh, really interesting and, and, and whose, whose, um, whose life story had a lot uh, for us. And it's, it's very inspirational, by the way, both the, both the episodes uh, I know I have a little bit of bias here, but both the episodes are very intense. They're, they're very, very tough stories 
but very inspirational stories because they've come out of, uh, in Aparna's case, a couple of different, very, very uh, big tragedies in her life. And ultimately that is, uh, you know, that's what Volkswagen want to do. They wanted to create a connect with their listeners about what they stand for and who they support. Uh, because sometimes it can, you know, so you can go beyond just the products and, and, and look at podcasts as a very, very interesting way to create uh, that connection and, and tell that story. Uh, another example that I want to share is uh, this one's from the New York Times. Um, so it's called The Daily. It's a daily show, um, in case you haven't heard about it. Uh, they produce an episode every single day of the week. Um, and what they did that was really interesting about The Daily in particular is that they do not just share um, the story of the day in audio format. And I think this is something that um, is quite a learning experience because a lot of people think that, okay, well, I want to do this and I also want to create in podcast, so I'm going to just put an audio version out. And in some cases that does work, uh, but it's about really adding value. So when I was talking about Volkswagen earlier, it was not just about saying, okay, here's another way in which we're going to talk about our car, but saying, can we create value in the medium in a way that's inherent to the medium? The Daily does something very similar where, uh, and, and the, the person that, that hosts the show, is, his name is Michael Barbaro. Uh, you can find a couple of his interviews on YouTube about how they go about that process. But ultimately, you know, they start somewhere on midday and they work the whole day. They kind of pick up the stories that the New York Times is working on. They pick out what the highlight story is going to be. They interview the correspondent. They, depending on the expertise, they might interview other correspondents, a foreign correspondent, uh, and kind of put together this story about or this, you know, follow-up investigation almost, or follow-up reporting uh, around what they do. They, they, you know, they wrap it up at like 2, 3 a.m. in the morning, and then they publish it at 5 or 6 a.m. in the morning. So when the people wake up, in, at least in, in the U.S., uh, they have uh, a breakdown of the top story of the day uh, told through the reporters of the New York Times in an audio format, but as a complementary piece or as a supplementary piece and not just a regurgitation. Ultimately, it's about creating that value, right? So it's about creating uh, value even to their existing subscribers. So it's not about saying, well, I want to get hold of podcast listeners who maybe don't uh, follow the New York Times and I want to tell them the news the way we tell it, but it's about creating value that even the, even the subscribers of the New York Times uh, can find something in the show that, that they haven't already read. Uh, which brings me to my second key takeaway, which is understanding purpose. Um, and I think this is, by the way, applicable potentially across um, any kind of content that you're looking to create. Uh, but I think it's especially true of audio because um, it's very easy to say, and, then, and this is not to say that there isn't a space for that, but it's uh, like I was saying earlier, right? I can take a mic and sit in front of uh, somebody who is influential or is done, who has an amazing story um, and, and, and showcase that, right? So, but, but that's, that's really only one type of podcast in one, one category of podcasts. There are 20 plus different categories that are actually listed in Apple Podcasts and there are millions of shows and millions of episodes as we've just discussed. And so there's so much you can do. And so it's ultimately understanding what is that purpose. And it's not just if you're a brand, this is even if you're just an independent creator that wants to create in this space, what is the purpose with which you're creating the show? Um, so for the New York Times, that is add additional value, add follow-up reporting to their existing coverage. Uh, for the Volkswagen, it was create a connect and share inspiration stories and drive inspiration um, with their listeners and with their, with their larger audience base. Uh, and these really help define how you go about um, creating your show as well. So I'll give you an example there. Uh, this is a show we just launched in January out of Egypt, as I was saying earlier. Um, and again, so the show in, um, interviews uh, some very influential people. Uh, the first season is primarily out of Egypt, although the one I'm giving an example of is someone based out of Lebanon. Uh, but the idea was to say, okay, what is it that we're going to do different? What is it that we are going to what is the value we want to leave the listeners with, right? And we honed in on the idea of doing pivot points, of taking somebody's journey and showcasing it around the pivotal moments um, in their life. Uh, let me give you an example. You know, when you're like, but my idea is right. I, I know it's good and I, and I could see it roll out. And I, 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 I really, I mean, I was there, but it just was <laughs> yeah, not meant yeah. to be. And then what made you, so what happened in the end? You, you decided to pull the plug? No, what, my mom passed away. So yes. 2013, my mom dies. And it's just my, this was the third turning point. So it's interesting. The reason I share this clip is because you see what she did there? She mentioned it, right? The, the, the voice that you heard was actually the voice of Sarah, not the host. And she was like, oh, so this is bringing us to our, my third pivot point. 
And the reason that happened is because we actually shared sort of the focus, obviously we've done that with every guest, uh, about the fact that the show is about the pivotal moments in your life. So we want you to think about what those moments are and how you broke away from that, either whether it was a tough moment, how you jumped off from it or how you, how you recovered from it, or it was maybe a, a moment where something really great happened and how you reacted to it and how you took that forward. Uh, but ultimately, it is also about putting the guests, the people you're interviewing and yourself in that zone to be like, okay, I want to hone in on this. And the idea was that, you know, a lot of the people that are being interviewed or will be, and, and the show is still on, obviously the first season is still on, uh, are people that have been interviewed in the past. Um, but we're trying to bring out a new side to them. We're trying to focus on these interesting things. And it, it brought her, when if you, even if you hear the whole interview, she talks about her entire journey around those three pivot points that she has. Uh, and that's what makes, you know, that's what makes it interesting. And then, uh, which is another uh, thing that we do get asked a lot is about, uh, you know, ultimately there's um, you know, so much listening time and so on. So this is why I drive uh, sort of the two takeaways I've talked about, also the third one, we'll get into in a minute, uh, about understanding the medium and then identify your purpose and then create around that. Uh, because here's what happens when you do that. People will come and listen. And what I mean by that is, what if I did a study last year where, because that was their concern, right? Spotify, is, as, if, uh, as many of you I'm sure will already know, does mu music and also does podcasts and is going into podcasts in a big way over the last couple of years. And so they were kind of understanding what is the relationship between the two listening devices, because ultimately music and podcasts are both things people listen to on the platform. And does one jeopardize the other in some way? And what they actually found is that when, when, they, when they took podcasts to all of their music listeners and say, hey, here's, you enjoy listening. Uh, how about you take a look at podcasts? Maybe that's something to you. They found listeners actually ended up spending more time on the platform. Now, of course, this is great for Spotify's business model. We don't need to get into that part. But the point of this is that there is not only a space, but also people will make time to listen to you if the content's good, if you've, you've done it right, you know? Uh, and as you continue to establish that relationship, people will stick around and listen to your shows. Uh, what we, when I was talking about the drop that we saw uh, because, of, um, because of last year, because of 2020, uh, between March and roughly about June, July, was people not being able to listen. Obviously, a lot of podcasters were worried that, you know, will we get it back? But what we figured out is after that, so from July to about September, October, not only did listenership start to resume back into its original number and has now completely restored itself, but in fact, people went back and listened to older stuff while they were, well, because they had more time to listen, right? Because they were interested in the show and they wanted to go back and be a lot of, the, and, and a lot of my friends who are also podcasters reported the same thing to us to say, yeah, actually I found that my, my older episodes got listened. So people who didn't have time before, even though they were following the show to go back and listen to stuff before they started following you, uh, found time to do that. So again, that's, that's interesting. Uh, and so coming back again, in terms of the takeaways, as I said, understand what audio is like, understand what you can do with it. Uh, this is both in terms of how audio can be created uh, and environments can be created, but also how audio is consumed and making sure you're, you're mindful of that. Uh, the second one is remember your purpose, understand why you're doing the show, understand what is the value that you want to provide your listener with. Now, mind you, this is not to say that like, don't do a comedy show. Comedy is a purpose too, right? Making someone laugh is, is a good purpose to have. But the idea of centering yourself around that purpose means that then you will make sure to be careful in terms of when you're publishing, is this really funny? You know, is this something I want to share? And how do I want to share it? Uh, you make better decisions. And then the third one is thinking beyond the interview as well. Um, I already mentioned a little while ago in terms of saying, uh, you know, an interview back and forth is not the only form of podcast. Uh, but I also mean in terms of thinking of the sound, right? So as I mentioned just now, where uh, it is a fundamentally an interview show that we do, uh, but the fact that he mentioned something that had this nostalgia moment allowed us to play a little clip that helped that. If you think of um, Aparna's episode as well, right? If as, as the episode was kind of finishing, as she was taking a pause while she was kind of reminiscing about what that experience was like for her when she heard the news, you heard that sort of piano key play through. Um, so there's a lot you can do in terms of creating um, this listening experience again, uh, because that's what audio is very powerful to do, set a mood, create an excitement and so on. Um, I want to play this, uh, just an interesting clip again, uh, which we can then, uh, you guys can leave a comment as well. Uh, I want you to just hear, this is a show called Mother Hacker that came out in 2019. Uh, it's a very, it's a, it's a fiction show, 
Uh, but I want you to listen to the sound and, and just think about it. Call Bank of Seattle. Thank you for calling Bank of Seattle. So I, I, I'm curious if, you know, maybe you can leave a, you guys can leave a comment. As to what are the sounds you heard? What 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 did you imagine when you heard this? Um, and you guys can keep feeling it, and I'll, I'll come back to it in a minute. So yeah, and then my final kind of you know secret fourth takeaway is uh, is listen. And when I say listen, I mean listen to what other people are producing. Listen to other shows. Uh, I, I give you two examples here: Serial and Mother Hacker, along with our shows, that are just interesting to hear how people are creating in the space. Uh, listen to your audience. You know, when your audience is telling you something and that can be indirect, that can be through download numbers, but it can also be like in person. Sometimes you will find people comment. Um, I did, we did a, a, a sort of a, a, a podcast masterclass a couple of years ago. One of the people there was like, you know, I want to keep my interviews raw and I want to showcase everything. But uh, every time I put it out, I get comments from people saying that, man, your, your stuff is too long because his interviews would be about minute 40, uh, hour 45 to two hours long. Um, and I was like, yeah, you know, you cannot ignore that because the people that you're creating for, and again, I already showcased the, the you know what well, what the stats look like in terms of listening. Uh, but the people that you're actually listening for, they're actually taking time out to respond to you to say, listen, I really like your content, but it's just too long for me. Um, and so it's important to kind of consider that, take that feedback into to consideration. Um, I see one comment saying card or Siri person autoresponder, right? I mean, that's so interesting, right? You you picked up all of this stuff, uh, and it was not even, I don't think it was even a 10 second clip, right? But it was all, all inspired by sound. You heard the Siri beep, so you know that I was there. You heard the door shut, you know the person was in a car. Uh, and, and of course the person also said like, call so-and-so. Um, you heard the autoresponder or, or the, eventually it's like, you know, you know that they're gonna call a bank. Um, if I played the clip a little longer, you would have realized they were stuck in traffic because you hear the honking. Um, so, you know, it's a simple sound addition sometimes can create such an interesting experience. Now mind you, this was a fiction show, of course. Uh, so there was a need to create that soundscape. But if you think about um, even an interview show, if you think about a documentary, you know, what sound can help? Um, yes, there are, there are reasons why you won't want to sit in a closed environment and, and get good quality audio capture. But there are times when you want to tell a story, um, you know, creating, that, uh, uh, creating things in audio that can really help you with that, right? Uh, and then finally, uh, as I mentioned already, we do a state of industry report. You can find this on our website. Um, it's free to download. Uh, you don't even have to submit your email address to us. Uh, there's, a, there's an online version of it, which you'll find on the website, but there's also a little PDF link that you can download and, and capture it. Uh, the 2020 report, of course, talks a lot about the impact of COVID, some of which I shared already, um, on, on listenership and on the industry at large and some of the interesting happenings. Uh, so do check it out. And uh, really, that's it for me today. Uh, our website's on the screen, so you have it. My email's on the screen, so you have that too. Uh, we're available, of course, wherever you might get podcasts, including Apple and Spotify. Um, and that's my introduction to podcasting. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks, uh, Chirag. That was uh, very insightful. We have a, I have a question from one of our students who has joined via phone. Uh, sure. So he's not able to type, so he sent it to me on WhatsApp. So um, Darsh would like to know, uh, how do you build an audience from scratch um, in a podcast when you have no listeners, no establishment? How do you get it to start? So he would, that's his question. Okay. So the baseline, the answer to this question is basically how you would create any content from scratch, which is you basically start publishing first, right? So the steps that I told you, you get through it, uh, you start publishing it out. Um, and then there is literally, I mean, you use your network. Um, the one thing I can definitely assure you is that podcast listeners are, uh, as I mentioned, you know, the kind of relationship that it creates is it's very implicit. It's very loyal which means you know, even that one listener you get is actually gonna stick around with you for quite some time as long as you keep producing good content, as long as you stay regular. Um, and so it's very important to do all of these things. Uh, beyond that, there's quite a few things, right? So we use, for example, back when we could, and we hope to resume that soon, uh, we use events as a way for people to get to know their podcasts. So uh, there are some podcasts do listening parties, uh, but others, uh, they can do stuff around the topic. So for example, we do a PR show around marketing and communications. 
uh, well, marketing, PR, and communications. Uh, and so we, we did a PR workshop. The host of the show uh, did a workshop. Uh, and then, of course, we told everybody who came uh, that, hey, by the way, a lot of this stuff is available in the podcast. There are a lot of other tie-ins you can do. Of course, social media is a big one. Most people tend to do on social media. If you don't have a following already on social media, then build one now, right? Use And use the podcast as a piece of content to create it because one of the things that um, well, one of the things that we see people do a lot is they create the podcast and then they wait, right? Um, and say, well, I don't have a social media. Yeah, that's fine, build it. Use the content of the podcast to create your social media content. The audiograms are big, you know, I'm sure all of you must have come across sort of these um, little, uh, whatever, the show art with a little waveform going through on, on, and on Instagram with the sound. Uh, we use video sometimes. Uh, to create that. Uh, and then one advice you'll see a lot uh, quite, uh, quite often is, um, uh, is, you know, is, is the guest you get, right? So if a guest has a good following, uh, that might be an interesting way. And I, I, I would recommend that you be careful here. Uh, it's easy to kind of um, do that, but again, you have to go back to your purpose, right? Ultimately, you want to interview people that actually drive that mission for you. Uh, but if someone is doing that, you know, encourage them to share and kind of leverage that as a way uh, to get them in. Uh, I'll be quite honest with you, like most people don't say no to a podcast because they feel a lot more comfortable than doing maybe live video sometimes. Uh, and they're very happy to get on with you. So there's a high probability, especially in the region where there aren't that many podcasts, uh, people tend to jump on and that's another way to leverage your audience. I'm seeing... Uh... A few more questions are there on uh, the chat box. Yeah, I see them now. Yeah. So uh, the first one, sorry, so I'm going to do the second one first because it was a quicker answer, uh, is how do we connect our podcast content with the three uh, platforms? So, so ultimately, uh, I'm, I'm assuming this, uh, this question is, um, is, is regarding um, sort of publishing and then how do you get it there? Uh, this technology is very simple. As I was mentioning earlier, there's something called an RSS feed, which you submit to these different platforms to let them know that uh, this is where they can pick up your content and they do it. It's, it's literally a two minute process. Um, so, uh, but if you want to know more about that, I mean, you can, you can find this information online, but if you want to more, you can drop me a line and I, I can explain the, the technical side of that. Um, and then I see a question from Nikita that says, uh, what's the guide to starting podcasting for beginners and um, what are all these options, right? So, uh, look, the reason I didn't get into some of the technical details here is because I, a lot of this information is available online. Um, so if you do a very simple test, a uh, simple search, sorry, uh, you will find very a lot of information about basic mics to get, uh, how to set up a feed and so on. Um, free mediums, I'm assuming you mean from a hosting perspective. So um, if, if that's the case, then there, there are free platforms right now. The pod has a free tier, Anchor is a free one, but that's it's currently owned by Spotify. Uh, and there are a couple others that do have a baseline free tiers that you can leverage uh, and then look to spend once you are in a position to do that. Um, because they because they all obviously host podcasts, they allow you to post regularly. They just put limits on how many episodes you can uh, publish or how much data you can put up at a given time. Um, uh, definitely, if you are looking to get sponsors, uh, there is a licensing requirement. This is true, by the way, of any content creator here. So um, just, just the way if you're on Instagram and getting money, it's, it applies the same way. Uh, there are obviously people, so for example, there's people like us and others that um, that you can potentially have uh, in terms of getting uh, sort of a, a freelance agency type of situation that allows you to re receive the money. Uh, but publishing it is just like publishing a blog or whatever, uh, which you can do. Um, I, I mean, I'm happy to talk more about starting podcasts, but uh, but like I said, the, those those baseline things are pretty simple. I mean, get good quality, decent quality audio, I would say, uh, and you can find that stuff pretty cheap now. Um, a friend of mine, uh, you know, he he did, he did a guide on how to start a podcast in under hundred dollars, for example. Uh, that's all the equipment that he purchased. Um, so so there's, there's there are things that, that absolutely can be done in a very easy way. Um, and then Thompson's question about security measures. Um, I, I'm not sure what the concern is, but uh, but by the way, all the publishers require us to use secure feeds. Uh, this is something that's managed by the host. Uh, so um, so you, you literally have to, uh, once you set up your RSS feed with the host, uh, they kind of handle that for you. Uh, but uh, but in terms of security, I mean, all, uh, Apple will, I think is already requiring it. Other, other platforms require it too. You have to have a secure feed, otherwise they don't let you uh, list in their directories.
Is there anything else? Uh, Joseph here. I just want to say a big thank you for Hi. coming today. Uh, you My know, pleasure. Students, a lot of students are eager to try and start their own podcast, but I tell them it's more than the first episode. I mean, you need absolutely. To be, it's you don't want to be the filmmaker with just one film in your head. You need to have some research and some more episodes going forward. So yeah, and I, I, that's in a way that's one of the reasons why like. When I do these talks, I do it this way. I, I don't talk about the best mic to get simply because that stuff is, I think, something that's pretty basic. And yes, I, I can. We can have those discussions. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm sitting on a mic in front of you right now. Uh, but as you said, you know, like getting stuck. I mean, as I said, 37, whatever, 60 percent of shows actually don't produce uh, stuff more frequently. In fact, the number for um, podcasts that have more than 10 episodes is also around 40 percent. Uh, wow. which basically okay. means you know so so that's kind of a good indicator to tell you that a lot of people try out to sh try out but then kind of give up either because again it can be sometimes it can be a purpose-driven thing they've just kind of lost their way sometimes it's a time driven thing or they don't realize how much effort actually has to go into planning your content prepping yourself doing the interview like there are multiple stages to that um, and you know it's very easy to sit in front of someone and talk to them for two hours but obviously that's not how you would publish right the show that I, I explained about with Arafat like that interview lasted almost two hours because obviously we were talking about comic books and movies and and all of this stuff right and we went a lot of places but ultimately we had to kind of distill that down into a 30 minute episode of all the highlight you know how his journey went and so there, there's a lot to, to do and by the way this is traditionally true of any content uh, and so it's important to think about that. Yeah, no, absolutely true. I tell them if you can't blog, I don't think you can podcast because you know. <laughs> yeah, try try blogging first before you go audio. I mean, if you I, can... actually, I, I I don't know. I mean, I I would say sometimes try podcasting too. I'm 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 a very erratic blogger, but I'm a very regular podcaster because I find it easier to talk than to sit and write and then edit and cut what I write and get it to a point where I'm happy publishing. Uh, so sometimes yeah. it's about also just taking to the medium, right? I mean, sure. I've, I've blogged for 20 years, but I have never been able to establish uh, frequency. Uh, and here we are, you know, we are three years in with 500 episodes because we publish every week Amazing. and it's just one of those things, right? So, so I think it's also about just taking to the medium, but if you feel like you can express in the medium, you should give it a shot, but also keep in mind that you will need to be regular if you want to grow an audience because the audience, I mean, yes, there are things you can do to kind of get a, get a spike right so um whether it's uh, advertising whether it's sometimes you get featured somewhere those things bring the spike but if the audience have to stay uh, in a medium like podcast you have to hold them well true thank you so much uh Chirag. um any other questions thank you so much mega uh no, thank, you, uh, thank you for your time no problem. Uh, great we have a lot of uh, media students uh, who joined us today so I'm, I'm sure they they really got to learn a lot so thank you so much for your time no it was my pleasure yeah it was... thank you I, I i like talking about podcasting so here we go <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you thanks so much uh, thanks guys appreciate it thank you have a great week thank you uh, bye guys bye.